right, let's get started. Okay, so welcome. <laughs> welcome to this little masterclass all about defining your style. If we haven't met before, my name is Karina. I am a qualified interior designer and interior stylist, property stylist. I've worn many hats. Uh, I've been in the industry for like 10 years now, not only styling residential properties for sale, but also fitting out and styling display homes for high volume builders, as well as interior styling for private clients as well with their own homes. So I've done a few things. And, and the number one, well, one of the well, the number one thing I hear first off when I go to, to a consult for a client is first thing they say is, sorry about the mess. Uh, <laughs> please excuse the mess, because it, you know, everyone always thinks their house is messy. And on oftentimes it's really not. And it's my job to look past all of that anyway. So we don't have to worry about that. But the second thing I hear is always. I don't really know what my style is. I like quite a few different things. I don't know how to make them work. Should I be sticking to one style? Do I need to have a few going? Like, how do I how do I make that work? So I thought I'd do a free masterclass just to help maybe get some clarification around that so that we can kind of define what it is that we're actually wanting to bring into our homes because there is so much out there to choose from. It can be super overwhelming. So Let's have a look, right? So what is your interior style? How do you identify your style? So a little secret here is you actually don't need to. <laughs> you don't need to fit into a box. Like we are multifaceted people. We like variation of different things, different styles. We change our minds all the time as well. So we don't need to define ourselves by like one style, like one box. And very few people that I've ever come across, clients, friends, families, colleagues, very few people actually fit into just one style box. Like it's usually two or three. So it's usually like one mate, like one defining kind of like focus style. So there's like one that they like the most. Then there's usually like a secondary one that kind of comes into play as well. And then oftentimes there's like a little third sprinkle of something. So it can be like, uh, like a modern farmhouse with a little sprinkle of glitz and glam a little bit of you know bling uh it could be like contemporary coastal with just a little hint of boho so there, there can be a multitude of different things and often it's really hard to define that ourselves because it's it's hard to be objective about that and it's confusing so let's have a look at some of the most common styles so that we can have a have a bit of an idea of uh what we might like because we can like multiple things like i've just said but let's just get a little bit clear. So let's look at a few of the most popular interior styles. This is by no means all of them. There are so many different styles, but I've just chosen the most sort of popular ones seen here in Australia. Some of them you may love. Some of them you'll instantly like, yep, I'm into that. Love it. And then some you'll just be like, not for me, not my, not my jam. And that's totally fine. Like we, we are all different. So let's start off with coastal. Coastal is one of the most popular ones in uh, the area that I live in here in the uh, Mornington Peninsula because it's a coastal a coastal area with a beach. It's a very easy style to work with because a lot of the houses, especially the newer suburbs and things that are getting built on like mass volume, they don't tend to have any like really specific architectural details. Like they have a nice facade and then it's just white walls and floors. Like there's nothing super... Um, there's no heritage, there's no real architectural details in a lot of suburban homes. So this coastal style is really easy to work with. Like for that, you can really make it work and make it nice and cohesive. So coastal is all about light and bright and breezy and like casual and comfortable and it's just really nice to be around. There's a lot of whites, neutral tones, rattan, basket weave, linen textures uh artwork tends to be beach themed <laughs> so you'll see like beaches and palm trees and things like that so it's a very very popular style and great for property styling if you are styling your home for sale because it's very it's a, it, it appeals to a wide audience which is what you want when you're styling for sale okay japandi japandi is a new one on the on the scene it is a mix of Japanese and Scandi, which off the top of the bat you wouldn't think would necessarily go together, but they both have a real um, focus on function and simplicity. So they do work really well together. It's all about uh, comfort, warm tones, 
uh, functional like pieces, like the peach pieces that you put in there have to actually have be functional, have to have a use. <laughs> You're not just going to put it in for the sake of putting it in there. Um, clean lines, uh, no clutter. It's all about, you know, everything has a place, kind of minimalist, not huge, huge amount of like layering with accessories and things like that, but very warm tones, beautiful, very elegant quality pieces, very popular at the moment, beautiful. Eclectic. So eclectic is fun and it is a mix of a variation of different styles and eras, a lot of colour. So you'll have like a real mix of um, like vintage pieces, thrift shop finds, things like that with some like crazy modern, um, ultra modern artists, like almost like sculptural type pieces in there. A lot of colour, like curved arms mixed with like straight there's like it's just <laughs> it can feel a little chaotic um so there needs to be some form of um refined like there needs to be some kind of key elements that you're going to use repetitively to sort of make that all work together but eclectic is a great one if you are in love like if you do like various eras various styles eclectic is great because you can be like I'm eclectic I like everything <laughs> which is a lot of fun Scandi. So Scandi is um, Scandinavian. It is very common and very uh, attainable for a lot of people if you think like Ikea. So if you are decorating on a budget, um, Scandi is a great one to go with because there are a lot of like affordable options for you. So tends to be a lot of like milky white stained timber floors, white walls or light, light walls, usually light grey as well. Uh, black details, light blonde uh, timbers, furniture, things like that. Uh, you'll see these um, kind of textured handwoven rugs. I call them souk rugs because years ago I used to work at West Elm and they had this, the most popular rug was called the souk rug and it looks like this. So now, <laughs> now by default, all of those kind of handwoven, almost shaggy type rugs with the geometric lines on it for me, I, they, I just automatically call them souk rugs, but they're not. They're not all called souk, but that's just... <laughs> it's embedded in my brain um but yeah you'll see you'll see a lot of um, prints a lot of artwork usually hung as a gallery wall or you can lean them up against the wall like on a console or a fireplace something like that um these spoke chairs are very common with the Scandi style and you can get a version of this for like 99 dollars from Ikea so super affordable Farmhouse. So farmhouse is a style that is very American, um, but we do see it a bit over here and it's getting a little bit of traction, but we don't necessarily have the, the huge, big stately homes like they do in America with the kind of that kind of footprint. Um, they do everything bigger in America. And I, having worked for Pottery Barn again years ago, um, the, the just the size of the furniture is just a scale up to what we would normally see here in Australia. But farmhouse style is definitely growing in popularity you'll see a lot of exposed beams reclaimed timber furniture uh like linens black uh wrought iron kind of balustrades and black window frames uh, it's very it's almost a little bit masculine too but it's all about kind of having a bit of history and character to your pieces and personally it's one of my favorites so um one day I might do a farmhouse we'll see uh contemporary so <laughs> contemporary Contemporary is a bit of a tricky one because contemporary literally means of the moment, which is kind of difficult to define, I guess, because it's hard to sort of be really specific about what what elements define that style when you're in the midst of it, when things are kind of changing. So it's really easy to retrospectively look back and go, oh, the 80s had this, this and this. And, you know, like the 50s and 60s, you could see these kind of elements. But when you're in it, things are always changing. And <laughs> like with anything, right, when we're in self-development or whatever, it's really hard to see what's happening when you're in the midst of it. So contemporary is kind of a really wide umbrella term and the styles can be quite varied. This is just one take on contemporary and contemporary can also be paired with other styles so it's like this is the modern version of Hamptons or this is the contemporary version of Coastal or this is the contemporary version of Boho so it's it's a little bit of a tricky one to kind of be like I like contemporary um which is one of the things when I deal with clients the first thing I say is oh they're like, maybe I like contemporary like what what does contemporary mean to you 
because your idea of contemporary could be very different to what my idea of contemporary is. So let's just whip out a, a, a Pinterest board or something <laughs> and let's get really clear on what that actually means because it's quite a varied style. But generally speaking, what we see in contemporary homes is a lot of uh, light, natural light. So you'll see floor to ceiling windows, open plan living, uh, clean lines. So they don't necessarily have any cornice detail or like ceiling rows, you know, details or anything like that. It's usually very clean and minimal. Um, you will see tech used in the house. So you might have like retractable blinds or curtains, underfloor heating, smart lighting, integrated appliances in the kitchen. Um, it's all about the modern way we in which we live, which involves a lot of technology now. So yeah, it's a varied style, but um, a beautiful one. Okay, Hamptons, classic, <laughs> classic. Everyone kind of has heard of Hamptons. So Hamptons obviously originated in uh, the upper states of New York and it's all about elegance and luxe and uh, expensive homes up there. But we've kind of got a bit of an Australian flair on it. It's kind of slightly different here, but you'll see a lot of these kind of white shaker style doors, marble or stone bench tops, these pendant lights, glass pendant lights in black. And you also see them in the chrome like I have on the image over here. A lot of layering with accessories, lots of blue, lots of like coral detail, like coral statues and um, paperweights and things like that. A uh, lot of like urns, um, hydrangeas, <laughs> uh, again, coastal artwork that'll have like beaches. Uh, coral prints in artwork is also very common in Hampton style. A lot of chairs will have that cross back detail and you'll also see the cross in like balustrades and things um, on Hamptons homes, colonial style windows, parquetry flooring. So yeah, there's Hamptons is pretty well known and pretty specific, but again, you can do like a modern version of it where it's not quite so blue and super layered with the more traditional kind of styling. There's definitely like a, a kind of slightly modern way of doing that and pairing that back a little bit with everything. There's variations of it, right? So mid-century, so mid-century modern, you might also have seen it or heard it referred to or seen it written down somewhere as MCM um, because people can't be bothered writing out mid-century modern. But if you see MCM written somewhere, this is the style. It is from the 1950s and 60s. It never really went out of fashion. It's definitely got a bit of a resurgence and it's definitely has people that are just like avid mid-century lovers, like they are passionate about it. There's a lot of these kind of UFO style <laughs> pendants. Um, you'll see a lot of like flat ceilings, wall paneling, rich kind of walnut tone timbers, cone style legs, natural stone, floor to ceiling uh, windows. It's very, they're very architecturally designed, the mid-century homes. Um, but yeah, beautiful, beautiful style. Boho. Boho is definitely around. There's a few, again, a few different variations of boho. This is kind of a more neutral option, but boho can also be very colourful as well. Um, if you think like Ishka, that store Ishka, um, very colourful. So boho is got like Moroccan influences. There's a lot of rattan, cane furniture, timbers, like raw timbers, a real mixture of textures with your with your cushions and throws. So knits, um, like linens, like tufted weaved like so many different like textures um it can be quite relaxing it's kind of like the modern day version of like a hippie kind of <laughs> hipster style um but very com very common and also very attainable because it's not a super expensive style like you can find some really affordable options in this boho style so it's a great option if you are on a budget okay modern organic Modern organic is also a new one to the scene. It is all about quality pieces and warm tones, a lot of beautiful uh, luxe textures with linens. It's honestly like I'm really loving this style at the moment. Like this lamp is gorgeous. Yeah, it's all about, it's not as um, layered with, with accessories. It's very considered. And when you have higher quality pieces in there, you don't have to over accessorize it like it can be super simple because the pieces that you choose are so beautiful um in and of themselves that they need some room to breathe and and 
be appreciated for them not covered and surrounded by a whole heap of stuff. So mid-century, I'm sorry, modern organic is um, definitely growing in resurgence. You'll see it a lot. Like you'll see it a lot at the moment. It's very popular, very popular, very organic, very natural, raw timbers, natural, natural tones and textures. Beautiful. Okay. So that was just like some of the most common ones obviously there are so many more there's like industrial french provincial resort style art deco like new york vibes lux new york like there's so many so many different options um so you can always do a little you know pinterest search if you want to but i've just kind of touched on the most common ones here in australia and there might be some in there that like i said you would have gone yep i love that i'm into that or there might be a couple that you will have sort of noted okay i like those two or those three so just note them down and just kind of keep them there as inspiration. But your property also may dictate what style it wants to lean to. So this home down here is obviously pretty standard suburban home, beautiful new build. Um, but in as far as the interior goes, it could be almost whatever you want, right? Like you could do coastal contemporary, you could do boho, you could do, you know, eclectic with a touch of mid set. Like you could literally do whatever style you want in this kind of home. You could definitely mold it to your desire. But some homes have really specific styles. So if you buy a home that is very clearly a Hamptons home, then the styling on the interior for consistency sake should probably be coastal in nature, whether it's full traditional Hamptons or whether it's a modern pared back version of that. Um, it's totally up to you. But like saying with mid-century homes, so if you see a mid-century home, then um, like this is obviously, these are obviously Hamptons homes. So this is a very common sort of Hamptons home. Uh, but if you have a mid-century home that has the, the full ceilings and the flat roof, then you kind of, it would make sense to honour the home and have a mid-century style interior or at least uh, maybe a contemporary version of that, but there should be some kind of nod to respect the building. You don't have to, obviously, this is all personal <laughs> personal taste, but um, that it definitely helps it feel a little bit more cohesive. So keeping in mind architectural details like wall panelling, you know, what kind of windows do you have? Do you have any... Uh, you know, architectural features, fireplaces, are there curves in the balustrade that you want to pick up with your styling? So all those kind of things should be sort of considered as well. So let's have a think about, I think I'm missing a slide here. Interesting. All right. So let's have a think about the elements within those styles. So because we don't necessarily want to just find a style that we like and go, okay, let, let's just get all of the piece that's going to work in that style and that's what we're going to do. We're actually going to kind of like think about it from a different set, different perspective and say, okay, they're the styles I like. What are the elements in that style that I like, right? So let's have a think about some of the aspects of those styles that we like. So what kind of colour palette do you want, right? Do you want a light and airy colour palette? Do you want it to be nice and relaxing and calm? Do you want fun, color, like colours, lots of colours and, you know, interesting things happening with your art? You know, how do you want the place to feel? Do you want an elegant, relaxed vibe like modern organic or do you want a sort of almost youthful, playful vibe of eclectic? Because the, the feeling and the energy you have in the space can also sort of dictate the style that, that goes in there as well. So are there any existing colours that you have to work with? Is there like a red glass splashback in the kitchen that you have to kind of consider in your styling if that's something that you're not, you know, in love with and you're not able to replace? Um, you know, what do you, what do you have to work with within the space? And what metal accents will you use? What other door, like the door handles and your tapware and all of those kind of like metal details because you can bring them up with your styling as well. So you can have like black accents with your tables. Um, you can have, you know, brass details with your lighting or your accessories and things like that. That helps kind of tie everything in and keep it cohesive. So shape. Do you want furniture that is very straight and clean line like a Japandi style or do you want more curved arms and rounded features like a Hamptons? So it's sort of do you want that soft, almost feminine feeling or do you want that really clean, like, you know, <laughs> Japandi, um, contemporary is quite clean line as well. 
And are there any shapes that you want to repeat like within the building elements, like pendant lights, fireplace details, pattern in your tiles, balustrade details, like I said, uh, window shapes? Do you, Does your property have a lot of arcs, which are like coming back in fashion like real quick? <laughs> Everyone wants arches back in their houses. Um, so you can, you know, repeat that with your furniture. Like there is a side table for every shape or form you can imagine. You can get... <laughs> literally whatever you want so you can definitely repeat that shape that's in your side table you can repeat that with you know some of your cornice detail or your balustrade detail that those little details really help to um, make the space feel really cohesive and considered and they're the details that make a space feel like it is a really comfortable you know how you go into a space sometimes and you think oh this feels really comfortable like, this is a really nice place to be and I feel good in here and then it, you know, on the flip side, you can go into a place and feel, oh, I just, this is not comfortable. Like this is not, I'm not liking it. I don't want to be in here. I'm uncomfortable. I want to leave. And it's those kind of details where we're repeating little patterns, little shapes, a nice balance with textures and things like that. That's what makes a space feel really comfortable. So it's the details that we do have to pay attention to, to really elevate the level of um, presentation. Okay. Textures. Is there a wall panelling profile you want to repeat? The the fluted details and ribbed like panelling is huge at the moment. And a lot of uh, older homes, like uh, one of the house that we had in Bond Beach a few years ago had this fluted wall panelling that we decided to keep. And <laughs> now it's like everywhere on, you know, dining table legs and side tables. It's it's everywhere. So you can easily re like you know, repeat that with your furniture if you have those details in your home. Um, are you loving any on-trend fabrics that you want to bring into the space? So Bucle has been really popular recently. Linen will never go out of style. Um, but you can really play with your accessories because it's not a huge investment to just like mix up your cushions and your throw every now and again. But if you are wanting to, you know, redo your flooring or redo your tiling, obviously that's a bit more of an investment. So, you know, you can have fun with trends because I don't tend to style according to trends necessarily, especially when I'm doing homes for sale. We try to keep things a lot more neutral and classic because they appeal to a wider audience. Trends come and go really quickly and trends also don't appeal to the widest audience so we tend to be a little bit more classic in the options that we choose so do you want a simple hotel feel for your beds or your moodier vibe so if you've got like a uh, holiday rental how do you want your guests to feel when they're in that bed in the space do you want them to feel like it's a big luxe hotel do you want you know if it's your own home do you want it to be a bit more moody you can have a bit of like silk or velvet throw or whatever whatever you're into <laughs> totally up to you uh, is there a cushion that you can help tie with? So is there, so with the patterns, with the cushions, the cushions and the accessories are what really kind of adds the um, the cherry on top, right? That That's what helps pull everything together. And your patterned cushions is can be where you, you pull a lot of your colours from. So a nice feature cushion can honestly like pull all of the colours that you've got around the room, can help make it all feel deliberate and on purpose and um, beautifully defined. So don't uh, underestimate an old pattern cushion or a feature cushion. Okay, so instead of trying to contort your home into a style box, focus on the elements that do work for you and let your home tell its own unique story. So how do we do that? <laughs> how do we do that, I hear you ask? Okay, so there's a few key points. So simple, versatile items. Furniture is often the... Um, easier items to choose it's the accessories that take the longest like artwork often can be um, a bit of a time consuming process because art is so subjective and there's you know it can literally change the room like instantly so but the furniture pieces can be quite easily molded to a few different styles so if you pick something that's a bit more classic and simple um, and versatile you'll be able to upgrade your style you know as the years or whatever goes on and you don't have to necessarily invest in a whole new lounge suite if you've chosen something that's going to be quite classic so a color palette that works with any existing tone so that kind of ties back into if there are any colors that are actually like in your tiles in your bathroom or something that's actually in the house already that you have to work with so keeping that in mind uh, use the decor to bring home the style you want so yeah like I said furniture is your key 
pieces and then the decor is what really just helps define everything and remember what purpose of the room sorry what the purpose of the room actually is so very specific when we are styling our properties for sale or if it is a, a holiday rental we style off a property with a very clear display of what that room will be used for or could be used for so it's very deliberate this is a living room that is a dining room this is a study this is your secondary living room this is your outdoor lounge like it's very specific because 90 percent of the population can't visualize how to utilize or how to fit out an empty space so that is our goal is to make that super obvious and super clear for people especially with um like rental rental holiday rentals and things like that airbnbs we they you have to kind of use a lot of like lifestyle images with your um online you know profile or whatever because it's that, that you're going for a holiday people want to see oh my god i can relax as an outdoor bath you know we'll, we'll style that with a towel and some slippers and a wine and maybe a cheese platter or something to be really like this is where you're going to relax this is look what you can do you can have some wine and relax in the bath uh, <laughs> and be really super specific and when it's your own home of course rooms have multi-functions like most people will use you know, a living room and it might have a study in the corner and it might have the kids' toys. And so usually rooms have multi-purposes, but let's just think about the practicality. Do you need a lot of storage for kids' uh, toys and things like that? You know, what if you have young kids, maybe a glass coffee table is not the greatest idea because it may be, you know, a bit of a hazard, especially with my two, it would be a huge hazard. <laughs> They're super rough. So let's just, yeah, consider the needs of the space and what kind of actual functionality you need to have that space really work for you. Okay, so we're going to go over a few of the furniture items. So a coastal home, you will see these kind of furniture pieces in a coastal home. So lots of nice timbers, whites, a um, bit of rattan detailing. Uh, yeah, super simple, very common in coastal homes. So I'm going to show you a bit of an example about how a furniture piece get used for a few different styles. And in this one, we're going to use the example of the sofa. So here we have a slip cover sofa. You can get these at, a, at various like price points. So this, you can get one similar to this. It's got thinner arms, um, but from Temple and Webster for like 800 bucks. Or you obviously can go up to like two, three thousand dollars for a really good quality one. And slip covers are great if you've got young kids and stuff because you can obviously take the covers off and give them a wash. Uh, but they are a very versatile, very versatile option. So let's have a little looky. Why are we not? Here we go. All right. So coastal. So this is a contemporary coastal style. This is just an image off Pinterest. I've just used Pinterest for a bit of a like shop the look kind of inspo. But this is a minimalist look. Obviously, it is a, not minimalist look, sorry, coastal look. This is obviously a slightly different slip cover sofa to the one that I have here as the example, but it is a slip cover sofa nonetheless. And it is a very coastal home. So we've got white walls, nice big um, window, a lot of natural light, white kitchen, super simple and clean. So you can see here we've paired it with a natural rug, a jute rug with a white wool kind of blend through it we've got a plank type coffee table some natural cushions like a boucle cushion and this is kind of like an olive linen cushion so super simple but this is a coastal style so we've got a slip cover in a coastal style home so here we have another one so this is a slip cover sofa but this this one's leaning more towards like scandy so you'll see that it has um slightly different accessories right so that you can use the same plank coffee table like that that would still work in this style but the rug and the cushions will be different which is giving it a totally different feel so this is more of your scandy style rug and some different kind of cushions and yet yeah, giving much more scandy here we have another one <laughs> so this is another slip cover sofa um, for more of your traditional Hamptons look right so again we've used the same rug as that first image so that same kind of coastal jute style woven rug but we're just going to pair it with different accessories so different coffee tables so this one has those cross details which is very um, common in Hamptons homes but we're using more of the traditional kind of Hampton style cushions so a bit of blue um you'll see a lot of like stripes in Hamptons and then a lot of like jacquard and like floral prints and things like that lots of blue 
Um, and then obviously a tray with some decor similar to what they have in the photo here on the table. So same same sofa, styled three different ways, and it's the accessories that kind of make that difference. So let's go for another example. So we have Scandi furniture here. So with Scandinavian furniture, you think Ikea, right? So this side table is Ikea. This one is Ikea. This one comes in black as well and a thinner version as well. This is like the wider option. Um, these are like $99. This is the spoke chair from Ikea for $99. So it's very um, affordable for like new homeowners, you know, young families, people that are on a bit of a, a bit of a budget. And you'll see there's a lot of blonde timber, a lot of cone legs, grey sofas. So, yeah, super simple furniture, but it's the accessories, again, that's going to make the difference. So for this example, we're going to use the wishbone chair as the example. Now, the wishbone chair is a staple. Like, <laughs> this chair was designed by Hans Wagner in 1950, and it is like the grandfather of dining chairs. It is the master. It has been used in every style you can imagine ever since. It's never not been in production since it was brought out. And you can see replicas um, in every shape and, sorry, not every shape, every colour <laughs> variation you can think of. Um, it's a very common, popular chair loved by many people. And this is it in a very traditionally Scandi kind of environment. We've got um, white, greys and blacks which is and blonde timbers, which is very standard Scandinavian. So we've got here a tulip dining table, round dining table to go with it, a couple of fun prints, and then a statement black pendant above it. So that's very Scandi, right? Let's have a look at it in a different colour. So if we make it black, we keep the same natural rattan seat or woven seat, but it's black. Now, this gives it a very different look. And in this is a very contemporary look. So this is quite modern and quite sleek. Uh, so we've just paired it with some different items. So we've got a simple black table. We've got some nice abstract art, simple white bowl, and this beautiful designer three-armed pendant, which is quite a statement. So very different, very well balanced. So you'll see that there is the repetition of the three different colours. So we've got these blonde timber tones, as you can see, is repeated. So you've got this tone with the floor, with the seat, and the brass kind of detail in the arm. So that kind of repeats and there's a little tone of that in the artwork as well. Then you've got black repeated with the chair, with the table, with the basket, with the frame and with the pendant lights. And then there's this kind of white off white repeated again with the walls, with the bowl and with the rug. So it's all very cohesive, very deliberate, but a very sort of modern contemporary style. So very different to Scandi. Now, if we look at the wishbone in white, totally different again. <laughs> so and we've kept the same natural seat with all three, but just different colours. And now we're giving like very coastal, right? This is super coastal, super simple. Like there's really not much going on in this room at all. I think the windows and like the view, honestly, is the draw card. So you don't necessarily want to make the house like super crazy and bold and like in your face because you people are going to be looking out at the beach. So let's pair that with a simple dining table, simple timber dining table, um, pendants reminiscent of these ones in the image. This one is from Beacon. And then I've just used a beach type artwork to sort of <laughs> represent the windows because they don't need artwork because they've got that to look at. <laughs> but um, if obviously you didn't have that view, you can replicate that with the beautiful print. And then a plant or two on the table. And that's literally all you need. Super simple, um, but very coastal, which is, you know, I don't think when Hans Wagner de, like <laughs> designed this in the 50s that he thought necessarily would end up in this space, but it's beautiful and it works. Okay, so couple of actions to take now that we've gone through all of that information. So in in terms of trying to now define what you want in your home and what your style is, we're going to need to do a little bit of like um, planning, a little bit of thinking about it, right? So make a note of the interior styles that you do like most. Maybe you do like coastal uh, maybe you like coastal with a little bit of boho or, um, you know, eclectic with a sort of tinge of mid-century modern, um, totally up to you. So just make note of those styles that you do like. And then under them, 
make a note of the reasons why you like those styles. So what are the elements in there that you, you're drawn to that style for? So is it because it's nice and light and bright and airy and white walls and the timber, you know, you like that kind of light timber tones? Is it the the colourfulness of the eclectic style, the fact that it's kind of like thrift shop finds and old vintage collections and things like that? Is that what you love? So what are the elements within those styles that you're drawn to? So instead of saying, I like the style, well, let's let's go let's dig a little deeper and think, okay, why? Like what specifically is it that you like? Then once you've done that, create a Pinterest board because I'm sure everyone is on Pinterest nowadays. Create a board and then just go into search, search the elements. Like you can either search the style you want as well, but maybe more specifically the elements that you like. So type in um, like, you know, timber floor interiors with timber, like light timber floors, or maybe like, you know, the vintage gallery walls. So type in those specific elements and then just kind of go nuts and start adding those pictures, like pinning them to the board and try not to think about it too much. So we don't want to get in our heads. We don't want to be like analyzing it. It's literally, we have to come from our heart a little bit and just kind of like get out of our heads <laughs> and just, just go nuts. Like just instinctively, yep, like it, pin it, pin it, pin it, and just add a whole heap of images to the board then once you've got a board with a good amount of images in there, you'll start to see kind of like a pat patterns emerging, right? You'll kind of see, oh, okay, I'm seeing a lot of these images come in and those images come in. Oh, okay, that makes sense. And then you'll be able to go, oh, okay, so maybe I like, you know, I do like like contemporary coaster with a touch of boho or I do really like modern organic um, well, just a little bit more of a paired back, but, you know, a lighter version. So you can kind of see that and you can kind of uh, maybe not stick to the the box of one style. And also then you'll be able to see that it would probably, it will most likely be a combination of two or three, okay? And that's totally normal, totally normal. If you get stuck, like if you're looking at your Pinterest board and you're like, I, I still don't know, like <laughs> I still don't know what it is. It still looks like just crazy to me. Let me know. Hit me up and um, I'll have a look at the board for you and we can, so sometimes you just need an objective set of eyes to just sort of like paint it out, like spell it out for you. Uh, <laughs> so I can totally do that for you. No problems at all. All right. Are there any questions? Let me see if I can now move over. I'm just trying to see, can I, if I stop sharing... Can I see the chat box? This is the thing. Here we go. Chat box. Here it is. All right. Are there any questions? Do you want clarification and any style, any issues that you have? Or are you still a little bit confused? Let me know in the chat box and I will answer some questions if you have any. If you don't, great. No problem. Awesome. All right, cool. Awesome presentation. Perfect. Thanks, Lucy. I'm glad <laughs> I'm glad it's um it's nice and coherent for you because that's always helpful. <laughs> All right, perfect. Helpful and easy to understand. Brilliant. That's what we want. Okay. So if after you have discovered your style and you're like, okay, I'm clear. I know now what I like. It's okay, I like two or three, but I know now why I like those things. All right. So we can focus on those elements. And now you kind of like, okay, cool. Now I need to like find those pieces and actually like put it in my home. And <laughs> where do, what do I go? Where do I go? What do I do? So if you do want to learn more, I'm now just going to do a little, <laughs> a little cheeky offering for you because I do have an online course starting soon. That's all about styling your home and, and the six steps to do that. Finding your style is step two of that process. So you've just got one step covered here already done. Uh, but the other steps will help you source those items, like plan the space, source those items, place the items and style them. So like style your space. So if you are interested in learning more about this and like continuing on in the process, I'm just going to do a quick little run through of what the course involves. If you have to run and you're not interested in this and you're good to go, please, it's totally fine. You can like head off. I'm not going to, you know, <laughs> be mad or upset. Totally fine. But I'm just going to go through with you really quickly what the course is about and how it can help you so I'm just going to move that oops there we go all right so it is the ultimate six-step guide 
it is going to help you plan, source and style your property. So if you have a property that you are starting to sell or if it is a holiday rental that you sort of need to help elevate the presentation of or it's just your family home and you just want to have a beautiful space that you can really show off and be proud of with your family and friends and make a really comfortable, warm home, then this will obviously be helpful to you as well. Um, are you feeling over this? Is, this is like the salesy part and it's always uncomfortable, like, Let's just be real, right? <laughs> I hate salesy things, so I'm just going to like just gloss over it all. But if you are feeling overwhelmed and unsure where to start, so this is the whole process. So this literally is a six-step process. We'll go through the steps in a second of what each step actually involves. But this will be theory-based all the way to the styling of the space. It'll help you get really clear and hopefully really confident in your own styling abilities and it will help you save money because styling your home yourself can save you thousands. Like if you are doing it yourself, instead of hiring a professional to come and style it for sale, you will save thousands. If you were doing it for your own for your own home, like for your own family home, um, avoiding mistakes is hugely beneficial. I hear it all the time. I went and bought this thing, and now it doesn't even it doesn't even work in my home, and now I have to buy something else. So getting clear on all of these things before you go and invest money in pieces can be obviously a huge saver for you and the budget. So the course outline, move my little face up out of the way for me. So step one is setting the foundation. So like with anything, it's important to know the why behind the exercise. So this step will help cover the design elements and principles, styling psychology, and the triangle method. So it's a little bit theory-based at the start, but it's important to sort of have your head around a few of the terms because there's nothing worse than like going through something and someone saying something and you're being like, I don't know what that means. <laughs> I've got no idea what that means. And then it's all confused and it's not good. So we're just going to get a little bit of the foundation set first so that we're all good and set. And then step two is identify your interior style, which we've just been through in this masterclass. So you are ahead of the game already. Step three is choosing the right pieces. So now that you have your style sorted, once you've done the exercise and you're all super clear on that, you'll be able to know what pieces to choose. Um, there'll be no second guessing. There won't be the overwhelm because you'll go to the stores or you'll go shopping online and you'll be super clear and precise and just like narrowed down. You won't be looking at all of the other pretty things. Um, shiny object syndrome is very real and we don't want to get distracted by all of the other things that you don't need. So that's about, that's step three, all about choosing the right piece. Uh, step four is arranging the furniture. So by the end of this step, you will be able to confidently place the furniture in position to maximize space, create impact and guide traffic flow, flow traffic flow through with a home. That is actually really kind of difficult to say, <laughs> but it's all about placing the furniture correctly, right? Step five is hanging the artwork. So without artwork, your space won't feel finished and pl the placement is super important. I often see them either hung too high or like too far apart. So step five is all about artwork, not only how to hang the artwork, but um, you'll be able to determine where to hang it. And artwork honestly can change the space, the whole feel of the space super dramatically. So artwork is a big topic. So we'll cover that in step five. Step six is style your space. So this step will cover the numerous ways that you can create an Insta-worthy home, whether it is your own home and you just wanted to share it and get, you know, <laughs> share it with the world and get some feedback. There's no shame in that. We all love a good before and after photo. So just do your thing. Um, or if it is for sale or as a holiday rental, it's more of a like need, like you need people to stop their scrolling through the hundreds of properties that are out there. You need them to be instantly like love yours, want to see yours, look at more, book yours or buy yours, right? So the stopping the scroll is super important for that purpose. And you will confidently style every surface of your home. I'll teach you how to, like, I'll show you how to make a bed, style your kitchen bench tops, your bathroom vanities, coffee tables, consoles, literally every surface of your home, every piece of furniture. We will cover that in step six. And then you'll be good to go. <laughs> so it's um, starting on the 20th of February. So literally next week, which is super exciting. It's all online. Um, it's self-paced. There's the six modules, obviously, and then within those modules, there is two, I think the first one has three videos, but there's like a couple of videos within those steps. You'll get lifetime access to the course. You'll get, there's templates and worksheets and like handbooks and resources and things that go along with those lessons so that you can sort of really embed that information. 
And as part of the early bird special, you'll also get the the My Australian Supplier list. There's 102 Australian suppliers of furniture and all kinds of decor art, indoor and outdoor furniture, all styles, all different price points. Um, and that list is at the value of $59.95. So you get that as part of the special, as part of the package. And you'll also get access to Facebook community page where you can ask questions and get support. So I'm in there answering questions. So if you do get stuck between like, should I choose this or this? Um, you can ask the questions. It's all about support, helping each other out. Um, maybe there's a really cool like warehouse sale or a dares has got like 70% off or something. Or maybe you find like a really good marketplace find. <laughs> like, you know, this chair is amazing. I don't need it, but someone else could benefit. Hey, does anyone need a sound chair? It's only 50 bucks. Like, share the love, right? We all like a good marketplace fund. So this is um, a early bird special price. It's $147 until it launches on the 20th of Feb. It's going to go up to $199. Look, even still at $199 for everything you get, it's it's a bargain, um, but it's on early bird special now. If you are interested in that, I can pop a little link to that if you want to check it out, but that is it. That is everything. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining and being a part of this masterclass. It, um, I hope you had fun and found it helpful. I've, um, I've loved doing it. I love teaching. So I hope it's super beneficial for you. I'm just going to stop the share screen and go back to my full face here on the screen. All right. That is everything. Oh, and we're a little bit oh, 10 minutes early too. I thought it'd be about an hour and I've timed it. Not bad, not bad. All right. <laughs> it's super helpful. If you've got any questions, feel free to pop that in the comment section. I will actually very quickly while I'm here, uh, let me just grab the link for you because that would be helpful. Put that in there. There we go. So in the chat there, that's the link to check out more information on the online course if you are interested. If you're not, like I said, totally fine. Um, this is a free masterclass to help you to find your style. So take it, leave it, use this, whatever you want to do. Totally up to you. Uh, yeah, I hope that was great. And uh, <laughs> feel free to reach out if you have any other questions or if you want help with anything else. Um, I've got quite a few tips and tricks and resources and things on my Instagram page as well, which I'm quite um, consistent. I'm on there every day. Uh, I did recently join TikTok. I honestly have no idea how to use it. So <laughs> trying to learn that as well. It's too many things on my plate. I don't, I don't know if I'm going to stick to TikTok. Let's, I'm, just, I'm not sure. Uh, but Instagram is where I'm at. So there's tips there if you're wanting to check that out. Um, otherwise, there's the online course. And I'm sure I'll do more free masterclasses in the future as well. So let me know if there is something in particular that you would like to learn about. All right. That is it. That is me done. Let me know if you have any questions. I'm sure I'll hear from you at some point. And um, have a wonderful week. Have a wonderful, wonderful week. And I'll speak to you soon. Bye.